we continue our look back at uh, the original Dave Does Disney, the um, the celebrating this past decade of this self-indulgent project. And we move on to the long delayed Hollywood Studios episode. Uh, as as discussed, this was delayed because I finished this complete episode and then lost the completed episode in a hard drive failure. I don't know why I hadn't already uploaded it to YouTube as a backup, but for whatever reason, I was planned poorly. So I remade this episode from scratch, and I am actually happier with the remade from scratch version of the episode than I ever was with the original episode. So small favors, but um, nothing has changed in terms of it taking forever to finish things. <laughs> My legacy continues to be one of procrastination. Wow, it seemed like this day would never come. Are you ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. I've got my original script still here, and uh, aside from a few updates I have to make to accommodate for some random acts of Lucas, I pretty much can just recreate my original video for this park. I think I'm ready for this park recreation. <laughs> reference for reference's sake i'm shocked i hate you i guess mickey still does continue to kind of be the voice of uh, if not fully the voice of the audience at least the voice of my self-criticism uh angry mickey says what i assume everyone else is thinking which is dave makes too many pointless references and um um Yes, I enjoyed leaving Adam Scott's clip alone. <laughs> I, I enjoyed having him be the, uh, I, I knew I wanted to leave one, uh, I, 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 I knew I wanted to leave one credit from the series, from the real show Untouched, and Adam Scott seemed like the only choice. That bit uh, took a bit to put together just to recreate the um, Parks and Rec uh, uh, credits exactly, but um, but yeah, I'm I'm uh, that was also like I had only recently gotten really into Parks and Rec at the time I made that reference, so my long legacy of uh, heavily referencing my latest hyperfixation in my current project. <laughs> Today, we finally look at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Much like Disney's main studio-branded theme park competitor, Universal Studios, Hollywood Studios is dedicated to the entertainment industry. Movies, television, theater, and Bob music Newhart all statue. get honored here, I gotta and focus not on just that. from Disney-owned properties. Movies and television owned by Warner Brothers, CBS, and MGM, just to name a few, all get a little bit of love. In fact, you may remember that this park originally opened under the name Disney MGM Studios. Disney had special license from MGM to use the name for the theme park, but MGM wasn't too happy when they found out Disney was using the property as an actual studio, shooting various Disney Channel shows like that Mickey Mouse Club remake that brought these people to the world. So MGM sued... That was a, a mean joke to those particular celebrities. Um, uh, yeah, hashtag free Britney. Disney, but Disney sued MGM back when MGM wanted to use their name on other theme parks. And long story short, the park is now Disney Hollywood Studios. The theming of the park ranges from the image of classic Hollywood to generic movie backlots to very specific. Also, that generic movie backlot, that Studio Gate, was uh, shot during the holiday season. Uh, and then when the holiday decorations went away, they had removed that Studio Gate decor. So, um... So I, I, I had to use the holiday version because uh, that was the only opportunity I had. Um, but 
the, the, the long legacy of getting footage of things while they exist and then them very quickly not existing anymore. It's a grand tradition in New York or San Francisco backlots. And according to Wikipedia, parts of Newsies were filmed at the stages here. So just remember, when you visit the park, you might not be far from the place where Christian Bale tried to sing. Where does he say you gotta live and die here? Where does he say a guy can't catch a break? He's not hideous, but it might be better in the Batman voice. Santa Fe! Are you I'm okay being mean to Christian to Bale singing boy. You won't forget me. As you enter the park, you walk down Hollywood Boulevard. Much like Main Street USA's atmosphere of a romanticized old-timey Americana, Hollywood Boulevard projects a romanticized old-timey Hollywood, full of cast members playing all those Hollywood character archetypes. Hello. I didn't see you standing there. Of course, I'm Dora Manesman, the greatest star in the entire universe, and I just want to say I love... All of you little people out there in Hollywood land for loving me. And in closing, I want to say I love you and the man behind that camera. That's you. Now please, cut the camera. The road leads right to a Disney Channel stage, obscuring the giant sorcerer's hat, which is obscuring a building designed after the famous Warner's Paramount's Man's Gromit's Chinese Theater, which... I have a connection to that story that uh, was mentioned in another Patreon podcast episode that I do not wish to describe publicly, but uh, if you go to the Patreon, you can uh, check that out. Also, look who's here, everyone. Hi. It is Charlie Callahan. How's How everyone doing, doing? I'm doing good. Just got a, you know, some hairs cut today because I figured, you know, you know, the hippie look was probably out. So, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, now that it's safe, question mark, to get hairs cut again, you might as well. Well, my usual spot was wanting, is still um, appointment by appointment only. And I'm a millennial. I don't like being on phones. So... <laughs> Somewhere I could just walk in and be like, "Hi, can I like not have all of this, please? Thank you." You know. So ten years of Dave does Disney. Yeah, it's been a hell of a ride. Um, but like your official like, um, up like like official official tenth anniversary is Friday, I think. Yes. Yes. Uh, so. Um, uh, so. Friday. Yeah. Friday is the 10th anniversary of the day I released the video. Yesterday is the 10th anniversary of the day I uploaded the first two videos unlisted. Um, but I was busy both yesterday and I'll be busy Friday. <laughs> so this seemed like the best time yeah. to do this. <laughs> Look who else is here. Woo! Hey! you gentlemen would like to join me we can keep watching these sure. old videos i made a decade ago let's do this how's is the great movie ride the great movie ride is a that's not there anymore i through animatronic nope. recreations of classic cinema scenes so is this gonna, just going to turn into is it still there studio, <laughs> with... <laughs> does that mean you have to start dancing sure conflict of interest and all but the absence is noticeable <laughs> I didn't, just, you didn't have to do it. What the fuck? Um, but we choose not to mention any by name. And it every snapshot of a theme park in time turns into so is it still there eventually? In their precious little <laughs> wizarding world. We'll see who's laughing oh. next Spider Man from you bastards. Someone in the comments. Mm. <laughs> Someone in the comments uh, said I called it on them taking Spider-Man back uh, after Spider-Man showed up in Civil War, but I really didn't because that was Disney Stu If anything, that was uh, Marvel Studios taking it back from Sony, and I was talking about Disney World taking it back from Universal still has not happened. So. Right. Right. But now we have bi-coastal Spider-Man rides that are completely different. And like, yeah, we'll see who's laughing now. And Orlando's well, still I mean, like, we still well, have I mean, the better Spider-Man. I mean, <laughs> technically, technically, Universal Hollywood used to have Spider-Man Rocks. 
True. So DCA True. took it from Universal. It just took 20 years. I mean, it took it. <laughs> took it from the wrong just kind of gave it up. <laughs> well, you can still take something that it makes it easier to take something if someone's given it up. Well, that, that's, about, that's, how, that's how I take children. But... <laughs> what? <laughs> Who said that? But... <laughs> um, the important thing is they are both 3D Spider-Man rides in parks with adventure in the name whose flagship franchise-based land opened 11 years after the rest of the park. Yay! Boom. If you're a movie buff, it's Hooray worth for comparison. Classic film scenes yeah. and some extra fun when a gangster played by a real human underpaid cast member hijacks your ride. And hey, a scene from Raiders. Sorry, Disney, but this does not make up for the lack of the Indiana Jones adventure. One thing you'll notice quickly around underpaid, the underpaid is cast that member age perfectly. Rides. Take the unavoidable advertisements for the American Idol experience, where you too can know what it feels like to have your passions be raided and your dreams crushed by a panel of has beens right before going viral. And within walking and distance of its older sister events. parts, yeah. If you're very yeah. lucky, Paul F. Tompkins might turn you into a running gag. <laughs> so, yeah. It's yeah, for, for an entire season, Paul F. Tompkins was a vulture to do recast of American Idol. And I, I read them okay, religiously. I was wondering why that reference was dropped. I, I, I read them religiously despite not watching American Idol at all, just because, you know, Paul just F. Tompkins. Just because Paul F. Tompkins is never not delightful. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, there was one point where during that season, I was getting a haircut and uh, the lady cutting my hair kept talking about American Idol. And I managed to keep up the entire conversation just based on information I knew from the Paul F. Tompkins recaps. <laughs> nice. So it, it, was, uh, it was allowing me to function like a human who is keeping up with current pop culture. <laughs> Yay, I, vicarious information. <laughs> I want to comment on that underpaid workers line. Uh, it actually reminded me of something. Um, I, I don't think I've ever told this story in any of my videos, by the way. But um, so decades ago, like 20 years ago, when I made that uh, Disney World song that ended up in my Small World video, the the mm -hmm. parody of It's a Small World, It's Disney World after all. Mm -hmm. Um I remember I had a lyric in that song about the cast members making minimum wage because I was a dumb teenager. I, 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 it wasn't, you know, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't worried about getting this shit accurate. You know, I was, I just put minimum wage in there because I wanted to comment on the underpaid workers. And, uh, and the message I got back from Dr. Demento is, was I want to play this song but I'm worried about the legality of stating that cast members are paid minimum wage. Cause that's, that's a real thing that they can, you know, sue you for slander if it's not true. So I either, I have to cut that whole verse out of the song or you got to provide me with documentation proving that they are in fact paid minimum wage. And I was like, well, I, I, fuck, they probably aren't. So yeah, just cut the verse out. Who cares? And then, and then I later re-recorded it for for the album. I changed it to "Insulting Wage." So there you go. That, but that then, is demonstrably but, but, true. But then, Doctor Demento still uh, didn't play the new version. So whatever. <laughs> he he played the edited version once. Ah well. <laughs> I, I I love the. I mean, I was talking earlier about how early on in the series, I was nervous because I still had the image of like Disney being litigious in my head. And I like, I, I was trying to make sure I said nice things about the park in my videos along with the criticism. Like I had nice things to say about the parks, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't just snark, 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 because I, I was, I was worried that if I was just in front of Disney, you know, that they might try to, shut my videos down or something because this is before yeah. i realized oh literally everybody is doing this w yeah they don't a, care within a few years uh there will be more disney tubers than like any other thing you can think of and <laughs> but at the time at the time when i was nervous i was you know just trying and, to make and, sure that i was 
And and Disney, well, I think, has wisely realized that they don't want to look like the fucking Goliath literally taking down David's. Like, it's... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because um, that would but, be one uh, hell of a headline. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I was... Um, but but I love the idea of of Doctor Demento easily picturing that Disney going to comb through the lyrics of this song until they can find the thing that they can <laughs> actually have a case against you on. You know, it wouldn't have been the first time. That's the thing. Yeah. Is is that like back in the day, like like he got a cease and desist letter a- after playing Weird Al's Pac Man, the parody of tax man like like the the radio station mm-hmm. literally got a cease and desist saying you know you can't play wow. that anymore you don't have the beatles permission and then decades later al became very good friends with george harrison's son and he was able to release it on the medium rarities compilation so nice but, uh pac man uh, yeah yeah uh, in his pre-record deal uh early years al did a parody of the beatles tax man called pac man which uh which mm-hmm. is pretty funny you should check it out but anyway Yes, indeed. Uh, anyway, the American Idol thing isn't there anymore, so yeah, no. <laughs> a lot of it is it still this park more than any other. I think is the uh, this there park is, probably changed the most in the past. There year. is literally, there is literally, <laughs> well, except for maybe some, some, some maybe stores or window dressing here and there. But uh, but there is not a single attraction at Hollywood Studios that has been there since opening day. Great movie ride was the very last one, because yeah. I mean, because Star Tours. Well, well, they changed Star Tours to Adventures Continue, obviously. But even the, I think the oldest attraction that's still there is the Indie Show. Yeah, and that's um, and and that didn't open until like six months after the rest of the park. So, so there you go. But a- anyway, uh, please go on. It's an audience participation show. I haven't checked it out myself yet, but I imagine they run it so often that they have to cancel much better shows just to make room for it. <laughs> but um, uh, I have seen the Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular. Speak of the devil. Speaking of. <laughs> this was also, side note on, on the Arrested Development gag. First off, that was before Arrested Development came back. Yes. Right. Second, second off, it was before ABC brought back American Idol, separate from Disney also buying Fox. <laughs> So now it's just a cluster of things that Diddy ended up owning. So, so it's, there are there are two categories of this video. Like, is it still there? And does Disney own that now? <laughs> the premise here is that we're witnessing the second unit get some stunt pickups for Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's the guy and from Step by Step. Stunt pickups appear. <laughs> on takes. This barely resembles any film set I've ever been on. But then it barely resembles any scenes from Raiders I remember. All joking aside, it is a pretty cool stunt show, and once again, it has a shoot the Nazi element. Some lucky audience members. <laughs> I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in violence. Cool slapstick gags. It should be on Disney Plus. You're right, Dave. Yes. Ride. Yes, and indeed. Speaking of rides and Lucas, let's talk about Star Tours. Now, I rode the original Star Tours in Disneyland long before I ever even saw a Star Wars movie. This is my so own footage of Star Tours. For it as I, do for the uh, nice. I have my own footage yeah, of Star Tours, too. Plastic, but it was funnier than most recent attempts at humor in the Star Wars universe. I loved every detail, even in the queue, from the bickering of 3PO and R2 to the silhouette of 2-1B repairing Rex between the flights. Everything about the ride was so delightfully 80s, hearkening back to a Star Wars before this, 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 this. And when enough time had passed to heal the scars from this. In my original <laughs> cut of the episode, the only thing I really had to say was the Disneyland version. You're at a spaceport in tomorrow. Why would R2D2 need a chair? Need a chair. <laughs> how would he even use a chair? Like 3PO, I could maybe see, but how would R2 even hoist himself on that thing? What would he accomplish aside from making him taller? The adventures continue, which of course is set long before. I mean, he could rocket launch himself up there. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but to what point and purpose? What I'm saying, what could be accomplished with a chair that wouldn't be accomplished with just a table or something? Eye levels? I don't know. Yeah, you could get that with a 
table. He could just put himself on a table. With this new rock Point is, a chair is specifically designed for a humanoid. Never mind. I'm sorry. We're, we're I was about to say you can't collapse a table. <laughs> you sure you can? Yeah, you can. My laptop now is on a collapsible table. But this ride is not only a better Star Wars experience than the original. It's Here, I'm going to collapse it now. No. <laughs> the are better, the I'm going to collapse it. I'm going to ah. collapsible <laughs> human. I'm, I'm loopy at the moment. If you had noticed. I'm coming up on hour six of doing this stream, so I'm not the only one. It also doesn't make much sense why Yoda is... Alright, but what's the tally at right now? The Rebel Alliance at the same time as Leia and Akbar. What, what's the tally for the, for the, for the donations? Right now just the characters <laughs> walking around We're not doing that stream again. <laughs> if you donate to uh, Dave's Patreon, not only can you see good stuff behind the paywall, but uh, you, you are supporting uh, Dave. That's true. Look, here are all the ways you can follow me and support me. <laughs> Fox News scroll has really gotten lazy. Duggins.com. <laughs> That's right, audience participation. <laughs> One passenger is chosen at random to be the rebel spy. Our two chair with its no crown. Can you imagine being a kid chosen to be the spy? That's why I say this is a better Star Wars experience than the original. While the original just had you near Star Wars. God, I still have an M and M's tube that was advertising freaking Revenge of the Sith. Later, pick five films. You're no longer just innocent bystanders. Um, you're the main characters in the story, and having three like, of you as the pilot, well, the other hat trick is uh, Ming Na Wen oh, being an agent of Shield and in of Mandalorian and, and being Mulan. Ride, including an appearance in the view of some and I mean Samuel L. Jackson was Mace Windu, Pat Nick Fury, true. and Frozone. So yes. I'd, I'd call that a hat trick. That, that I mean, counting dialogue, Pixar, we do get yep. yeah, Burton, I'd say so. And Allison Janney, and is that John Ratzenberger? I'm seriously asking. The only info I don't think it is, but and I think they cast him because it nah. looks like him. <laughs> Man, that's absurd. Probably. Service that they really put in the what about Christian Bale? Really see, see fuck Wedge. Christian that guy should have cameoed oh, yeah, in Rise of Skywalker. Right? I, I, right? It up. I did not just know Cliff Clavin's Star Wars name off the top of my head. Yeah, is Christian Bale pretty I close to the hell? I feel bad mocking you. Um, a lot of great jokes. Pocahontas, inside jokes Pocahontas, for Pocahontas and Thunder, and for Disney fans. but Bale's not in Star Wars, Wars, is he? No. I really like this gag where the oblivious baggage check droid is supposed to stop droid smuggling and, well, doesn't. The attention to detail is spectacular, and the ride contains the very best 3D I've ever seen. Sure, the graphics look more like a video game than a movie, and it's missing the charm of the original scale models, but the depth is incredible. Now, I still miss the original. Do they still have the Rise of Skywalker scene? Final part of my childhood. Going and on I in there. I hope they roll it back out for a special occasion. I, like I haven't written it in over a year. <laughs> Come on, with so many ships. You uh, one I wrote it the one time, time I've been back, and it was um, it was all new trilogy stuff, but it wasn't the Rise of Skywalker stuff when I went. So uh, okay. I imagine, okay. I imagine it's still in the rotation. Um, but yeah, uh, Morgan and I wrote uh, about a month or two back, and uh, um. It it was uh it was Jakku and Crate, um, mm. which is you know good combination of things. Yeah. We also t we also talked over where I uh, uh, stated that having three people as the pilot makes it a better Star Wars ride, like because it's a character kids already know. But I was kind of dismissive to the fact that um, but you know I do miss Rex. Because again, I was a Star Tours fan before I was a Star Wars fan. So, mm -hmm. so Rex is a character I love. Um, so I'm glad that Rex lives on in Galaxy's Edge now. Yes, yeah, of course. Film, but when you take off the nostalgia goggles, this ride is a worthy successor. And when was the last time you said that about a Lucas update? 
We hope you enjoyed your fight, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. And you can totally tell that this video still predates the, the sequel trilogy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, it, it very shortly predates the payout. <laughs> like, the purchase. It was, it, it was not long after this that they announced the, the Lucasfilm buyout. And uh, yeah. that that was, um, like, at the time, the fanboy outrage was just, oh, why does George have to change everything and make bad prequels? And now the fanboy yeah. outrage is, ah, oh, I don't you respect what George was doing. <laughs> Can't please anyone. It's a, it's a circle of fanboy outrage. Okay, we need to move on, but as long as we're on the subject of 3D films with Frank Oz's voice, it's the Muppet Vision 3D, which was Yay! actually the last Muppet project Jim Henson directed before his death. So if any one of you corporate bastards even thinks of updating this for a new generation, I will not be held responsible for my actions. The film was that was my fanboy outrage. They... <laughs> well, the they kind of is... sort of did with the Constantine the... stuff they added to the I was okay. I was okay with that. I was okay with that because they didn't. I was thinking more releasing the whole show with the way they did with Star Tours. Right, 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 right. right. Or getting rid of it entirely on the West Coast. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which I don't. I, I don't like. Muppet but as long as it's still in Florida, gags, whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. Go on. Yeah. In three D. We get to sit in a oh, replica okay. of the Muppet Show Theater. We get an animatronic Statler and Waldorf. The Swedish chef is running the projector, just like in the Muppet movie. Sweetums runs around in the theater. And then there's Waldo. Your mileage may vary on Waldo. I like Waldo. Some people find him incredibly I like Waldo. He just makes me sad. Waldo was Jim Henson's experiment with real-time 3D CGI puppetry. I do like that they had that, uh, how many that thing on display. At the at the, play, yeah. yeah. I would give that was awesome. To see what Henson could create with modern special effect technology, and which is another vlog I did. Pass. Yeah, you know, guys, when we do yeah, literally TV outside of seeing Bert and Ernie like right there behind glass, just seeing that just kind of brought a tear to my eye. I'm like, oh, it's fun, funny, and filled with that undeniable Muppet spirit that went missing for so long until Jason Siegel descended from on high to bring it back. I also have to mention the gift shop, which, despite a disturbing amount of non-Muppet stuff, is full of all sorts of great hidden and inside jokes. Parts of the store are themed after classic Muppet movie sets, like the Happiness Hotel from The Great Muppet Paper. The decorations are packed with gags. It's basically everything a Muppet-themed area should be. Well, except for one detail, it's way <laughs> too small. Originally, Disney MGM Studios was going to have an entire Muppet land, including a dark ride, but all that came out of it was the 3D show and a costume live show that I've only seen on YouTube, but it wasn't mm. that great. All the other plans fell apart after Henson's death. Okay, you know what? I was sad enough that the world doesn't have Jim Henson before hearing about all this. I don't need even more reasons. Yes, Haley, the labyrinth stuff at the exhibit was great, tragedy. too. <laughs> But Henson had said that he wanted the world of the Muppets to go on after he was gone. Now that you are a professionally published labyrinth uh, expert. Yes, right? yes congratulations, Ailey. Undeveloped land. Screw just one section. Give the Muppets their own entire park. They're here. Ah, oh, forget it. I'm just going to cheer myself up by focusing on all the fun details. I love, I love the sinister undertones of Eisner being like, they're here. Okay, who else can we get? <laughs> and his impressions of our voices make us sound lame. <laughs> okay, time for a lunch break. And what restaurant could possibly be more fun than Pizza Planet? I... Sci-fi dining. This? this isn't Pizza Planet. Yeah. This is nothing but a generic arcade and pizza place in a generic... That's another thing is I didn't ever sci-fi dine in or 50s primetime cafe because I didn't eat at either of those until Tony was in town, which was after yeah. the test. And I, I would have had a lot to say about both about the theming of both of those restaurants. So, uh, and the I, fact that they played Tom and Jerry cartoons at a <laughs> Disney park. Yeah. Well, that, that's a holdover from when it was still Disney MGM. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I yeah. filmed the entire loop too, so I have that on my hard drive. Oh, nice. I mean, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I mean, the clips they used, they use in general in, uh, in at the Sci-Fi Dining Theater. I don't know if they've ever switched them out. I mean, I mean, for all I know, that's I haven't been to the park in about a decade, but um, last I checked, they were still using the the classic run of them from the early '90s, uh, full full of like you know the. 
the the cartoon of the alien that comes down to Earth just to go to the snack bar and shit like that. You know, <laughs> they come from all over to enjoy our intermission. You know that that cheesy shit. It's just great. <laughs> um. Anyway, this pizza planet is no pizza building. Rizzo. Pizza planet logo. No. Yes. Didn't you even see the movie? That's where I want to go. Look at that place. Holy crap, it's awesome. And here they just pour salt on the wounds by reminding us what Pizza Planet in the movie looked like before giving us this mediocrity. Hell, look and at And then we kind of yeah, got was... Pizza Planet in California, and it's not yeah, even, no, no. it's still not close. No, 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 we... no, our, no games in that one. Fucking, it, at least right this one. Across, it's right, right across from where the arcade to... used to be. <laughs> There's I mean, still a a sign for Starcade. It still lights up. Like I, could have, I don't know. I went to Disney World uh, very shortly after Toy Story opened, and that was a very quick turnaround on that. I think like within just a couple months, because it was previously something else. It was previously mm. another just just generic pizza place that had arcade games, and they're like, "Hey, this place, uh, Toy Story's a hit now." This place has pizza and arcade games. Let's just call this Pizza Planet now. And yeah. uh and it, yeah, it was it, it was some bullshit. I was so disappointed as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and now it's an even more disappointing Pizza Planet. Yeah. In in our Tomorrowland. <laughs> uh the only good thing about it is it's uh the soda fountains are now, they moved them into the dining area past the cash registers so you can actually get refills on Odin now. Good. <laughs> so, that, so that part is nice. But Are they freestyle or no? They are not freestyle, unfortunately. Nah. But, um, but uh, uh, Pim's Test Kitchen has freestyle machines that you can get refills. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't worth pretending to be the planet for <laughs> Crane games, and not a single one of them looks like the one from the movie. They could at least have put the ubiquitous Pizza Planet truck outside, but no, Pizza Planet, you fail. Ah, damn it! Is there a I think that's the angriest I get in the whole the series. Oh, that'll do. Lights, motors, action is a and this is gone show where we're supposedly yep. watching a second unit team yep. action sequence. Thanks, Star Wars. <laughs> Anyway, tonight on It's the Mind, we examine the phenomenon of deja vu. Ah, but what sets this one apart from India? That, that is, is my favorite flying circuit. That's you cross promotion because it's not a show <laughs> about how awesome stunt drivers are without some cars that you pretend don't have drivers. Aside from that, most of the show is filled. With I remember bef um, with cars, bikes. Jet it actually wasn't before all the engine noise. Hang, hang on, pause it for a moment. Handle. Sure. I went to Disney World uh, in January 2007 for my honeymoon. And uh, and when I saw Lights, Motors, Action then, um, and now keep in mind, this was six months after the movie Cars opened. This was January of 07. They didn't have Lightning McQueen. They had Herbie. <laughs> As in the Herbie fully loaded version of Herbie. <laughs> that, uh, I, okay, I do remember that there was a snack cart right outside of Lights Motors Action that was yep. themed to Herbie Fully Loaded. Yeah, it, it, and and Herbie does a cameo in the fucking stunt show, and it took them a couple of years to realize, oh yeah, no one saw that movie. People actually saw Cars. Let's put lightning in there. It's like <laughs> what the fuck, Disney. But uh, well, that was right, that was also right around the time that they had just purchased Pixar. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and why they, not put as much Pixar in the? Yeah, the, you know, they, so they, much, so much at Hollywood Studios. Uh, you know, at least when it first opened, was just, you know, oh, let's take you in uh, the the magic of movie making and make and you're walking through sets and shit, which is. I mean, I mean, it's cool from a certain perspective, but it's also so transparently cheap. Like it's yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, see, while it was the Herbie fully loaded version, they should have had a whole section of the show where uh, Tom Lennon and Ben Grant come out and read their whole Herbie fully loaded "What Happened" passage. Yes, from their screenwriting book. That would have made it bearable. <laughs> and of course, there's an audience participation bit, sort of. 
At one point, the director asks for a volunteer from the audience who's qualified to drive a very special car. Find me a kid! Yeah! And this director went to the Zordon School of Measuring Qualifications. <laughs> so the kid is controlling the car about the Zordon joke. Control. Or is he? No, it's just Chuck Testa. See the driver beside the car? Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, it's just, uh, also, there's no Easter Bunny, and your parents are only back when Rhett and Link made cars, commercials for random cycle. people. Enjoy the rest of your magical <laughs> day at Hollywood Studios, kid. Oh, but they give them a special pin, so that makes it all better. Then there's the streets of America. I also think I said your parents are raising you to harvest your organ for the cyclos, so I threw a Battlefield Earth reference in here for no reason <laughs> at all. That famous Why not? between New York and San Francisco. Hey, what did you expect? Mexico's next to Norway. No, these are actually supposed to be... I mean, there's Escape from New York Pizza. City streets. Yeah. And the only attraction in the area is the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Playground, which is exactly what it says on the tin. I'm a little surprised they haven't given this a Pixar rebranding yet, since half of their movies could easily be applied, and all of them are more popular right now than Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. But hey, at least fans that are outraged about the 3D show's closure still have this. Really, there are a lot of stages for attractions around here that are just empty. Maybe they'll be getting something cool. Uh oh, Charlie disintegrated. A pretty dead part of the park, which is good news for the backlot tour. I thought I was you back. All the way to the back of the park, you might as well ride something. You turned into a frizzy frizz there for segments. a moment. Oh, the first is a special effects demonstration in the same vein as the park stunt shows. See if we can do that again. Instead of Indiana Jones or a generic car chase movie, both of which people might actually care. Wait about, a minute. This effect show is dedicated a Disney to Hollywood, a pre Galaxy's Harvard. Edge Disney's Hollywood Studios Harvard. show. That does Harvard. behind the scenes demonstrations? Is that even legal? When he made Pearl Harbor. This whole queue is dedicated to Jerry Bruckheimer and slash or Michael Bay's egos. Good it showcases Lord. their films from the enjoyably bad to the what a relic. pretty good to the dear God, I hate Armageddon with every fiber of my being. No other movie has ever hurt me as much as it has. And this is coming from a guy who wrote jokes for the Batman and Robin riff tracks. Also, what's with the funky squashed aspect ratio? Doesn't anybody here know how to adjust the settings on a widescreen TV? Then they demonstrate nope. some water. Effects. How dare you make Michael Bay look fat? Why is this part of the backlot tour? The Honey I Shrunk the Kids TV show is wild. It is worth is revisiting. Really it definitely is. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why isn't that on Disney Plus? <laughs> it should be. It should be. But um. Anyway, after that. Well, I want to comment on this though. Um. Yeah. So for for years that part of that Pearl Harbor thing was the last remaining remnant from the original version of the um of the behind the scenes studio tour right uh, where they where they showed you a bunch of stuff it wasn't originally part of the backlot tour uh specifically and i remember originally it was not tied to any specific movie it was just a demonstration on how to do water effects like that and then i guess when pearl harbor came out they're like hey we actually have a movie this kind of fits into now so they just yep. themed it to that it slapped it on it <laughs> anyway. uh, it was the, it was one of those uh re-theming an original attraction to an ip that uh required very little effort on their part but also raised little outrage because it was an original attraction nobody actually cared about <laughs> Exactly. And you walk through a prop warehouse to get to the second segment, the obligatory tram ride. Now, it's impossible to go on this tram tour. You do, you Tyler. Tram. You, 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 know, you do know a podcast Hollywood. that it came up on. The main difference is that California's Universal Tour is of one of the most famous and important I kind of know the guy who developed it for TV. Legendary films were shot. The, um, movies and TV shows are the still Ed Ferrara, shot. who... Um, uh, yeah, Ed Ferrara, who co-developed the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show, um, was one was a teacher of mine in college, and I'm still Facebook friends with him. So, mm. and uh, and the other and his writing partner, who developed the show with him, happens to be named Kevin Murphy, but it's not MST3K Kevin Murphy. It's different Kevin. Different Murphy. different Kevin Murphy. Yeah. That's true. It came up on a podcast we both listened to, but you covered it on your own podcast. Um, <laughs> but uh, this footage from the first episode of The Tonight Show with Conan. Uh, oh my God, yes. it was so good. Um, this footage, this, I I think at the time... This was the real had, grand finale of the studio tour. Yes, yes. They, uh, they played Before this, Trantastic, this was it. <laughs> 
This is where exactly. all the GM bailout money went. <laughs> it, it's such a, and, and I think I got this particular version of it just from somebody uploaded it to YouTube. And I right. think the person who uploaded it to YouTube had screen capped it from Hulu. So that's what's kind of choppy. Um, no. But, uh, but then later around, when I needed the footage again for some Blitz California stuff, I found out that the entire first episode, uh, and possibly the entire run, but at least the first episode of The Tonight Show with Conan is on archive.org. So, oh, cool. Oh. So I was able to, or at least was, it may have been deleted since I downloaded it, but I was able to get slightly better resolution uh, versions of footage nice. more recently. Remember when Conan was almost respected? That was wild. Yeah. <laughs> I actually remember. remember seeing him on the back lot driving around uh, his uh, oh, nice. go-kart desk. I was on the tour when he did when he passed by. <laughs> nice. Nice. So the one time you actually did see stars on your tour. I did, yeah. When does that ever actually happen? That's literally crazy. never. No, yeah, I've never seen I've never seen celebrity on the uh, Universal tour, but uh, when I was out here in 2009 for the internship program, the program we were going to had us all do a uh, walking tour of the Sunny Lot, and as we were getting to Lot, we'd all Judd Apatow just walk into his car. <laughs> when I first moved to LA, um, I, t- uh, I it was part of my college's. Uh, program they called it semester in LA but it wasn't actually a full semester it was just kind of a five week program but mm-hmm. we did it i i don't remember which um which studio it was at but it was at some studio in studio city and at the same time that that, that i was taking this thing at the same lot do you remember that failed um th- that failed mr show reunion pilot david situation with David Cross and Baba, it, it was like their attempt at parodying sitcoms, and and it didn't it didn't work. It it it, it didn't get picked up after the pilot, and uh, no one's actually seen the pilot. A couple of clips have been released online, but one time I'm fucking walking across the lot, and about twenty feet away from me, I see David Cross talking on a cell phone, and Hi. and it's like, and I'm like, I have nothing to say to him that wouldn't just make me look like a drooling fanboy. Plus I don't want to interrupt his phone call. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice to, nice to see you from afar, David Cross. Cool. <laughs> Hello person whose work I enjoy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Plus I've heard he's, um, a little like, like it, it, like if you have a fan interaction with him, it kind of depends on what mood he's in, whether or not it'll be a pleasant one that let's yeah. just put it that way. But anyway, like he's one of those basically, but, but anyway, let's... <laughs> I've, I've heard, uh, I've heard nothing but good things about Bob. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Get well uh, soon, and, Bob. And, I know you're watching. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad Bob Odenkirk is recovering and yes. absolutely staying strong. Um, but I've, uh, I've known a few people who have just like run into Bob Oker randomly and said he was like really friendly this time. And absolutely. And while he was in the hospital, literally nobody was saying anything even remotely negative about him. No. And like when when's the last that happened about anybody? No. It, it it's it's it'll it, it happened to Bob and if anything happens to Weird Al it'll happen to him. Oh no god, way. yeah. Yeah. But but th- th- that's pretty much it. <laughs> anyway, uh, not today and Florida's Hollywood Studios is pretty much where they shoot commercials for Disney's Hollywood Studios. We are going to do a little close-up shot so I'm just doing a quick no universal shirts. <laughs> So, so that is from uh, one day when I was walking around Hollywood Studios, and they happened to be setting up a shot, and it was just like, hey, this, this is, uh, they were shooting a thing for, I think it was for in-hotel room footage, uh, <laughs> and it was everybody nearby. It's like, you want to be in it? You can be in it. And um, they, uh, basically, we were supposed to pretend like Lightning McQueen just drove past us, and they were going to digitally superimpose that later. But wow, they the asked was... you permission to be in a video with Lightning McQueen? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, and I, I know you guys just show up in Cars Land footage, uh, official yeah. Cars Land footage. At one right? time, you can see us in the background of a of a 
of a Disney Parks YouTube channel video <laughs> with, about Lightning McQueen. See, but here it was a digitally inserted Lightning McQueen, so they needed to boss us around in order to boss us around. Gotcha, they gotcha. That permission. But uh, as I'm, like, I left in the clip, obviously, where he's like, just saying no universal shirts. Um, I was wearing my uh, Alpocalypse shirt at the time. Mm. And uh, uh, one of the crew guys was like, okay, you can wear this shirt, but we got to put a sticker over. I had to put a Mickey sticker over Al's face on the Alpocalypse shirt so that, <laughs> like, because that would be the only thing to make it, like, legally recognizable, I guess. Um, but, uh... Okay. But, but, uh... Uh... The, uh, the comment that the crew member had when they put the sticker over Al's face was, like, just gotta cover this up because we don't own him yet. <laughs> and, uh... Uh... It was a it was a funny Disney joke, but also this was long before we knew he would actually be the star of a Disney cartoon. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> the only historical thing on the entire tour is the private plane used to scope out the land for Walt Disney World. The tour barely mentions any shows or movies actually being shot there. They show movie props and costumes, oh, but not no other ones. And when you pass the wardrobe department, they just talk about making the wardrobe for the parks characters. And while the Universal Backlot Tour has several little stops for shows and effects, Hollywood Studios has one, Catastrophe Canyon. It's not bad, but it's not worth the time the rest of the tour takes. Then again, not all of Universal stops are that worthwhile either. It's just the flash flood from Universal. That's all it is. Man, what is it about the Backlot Tour that brings out my inner Trey Parker and Matt Stone fanboy? <laughs> Still, if you're in Florida, the Hollywood Studios Backlot Tour has one huge advantage over Universal. Proximity. So, there's that. And speaking of proximity, we're almost at Pixar Place, which is sort of modeled to look like Rip. Pixar's actual studio, except much, 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 much tinier. And Apparently, really the Pixar, Pixar Place alley is still there. It's the just Story. there's nothing in it anymore. The only ride in the Story right. Land is Toy Story Midway Mania, which, as of this recording, well, is the most popular single ride in any Disney park. The well, line let me is um, never shorter pause than it for now. a moment. So, the reason I mean, the reason that thing is so narrow is because originally, when the park first opened, they had worked like the Backlot Tour and the special effects show was like this one long, con or, or not special effects, like be the behind the scenes tour. It was all like this one continuous big long thing that took like an hour or so to get through, or hour and a half. And um, and like, you know, parents would complain because they'd be there with their babies and, and, they, and they had to explain the concept of a diaper to the fucking cast member or something. But... Um, so, so they had to open that alley just to give people an option to, uh, to do one attraction without doing the other, or if they needed to, yeah, you know, uh, you know to, to basically break it apart. So they, so that alley when it was first built was never meant for guests to go down it. It was only meant as a thoroughfare for cast members. And then when they opened, um, and then when they replaced the sound stages with like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, of course that you know. It became the thoroughfare for that. And then when they turned Millionaire into Toy Story Mania, it became the most choked, crowded alley in the park just because it's so damn narrow. And uh, and then, and now, of course, you know, Toy Story Land has fixed that problem. But, you know, for years, it was just it was it was really untenable. Yeah. And the only way, the only way to make it themed was to make it look kind of like the entrance to a studio. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. long, sometimes several hours long, and the fast passes run out very early in the day, so prepare for a long wait. Fortunately, it's mostly an entertaining wait. As always, well, almost always, I am in <laughs> awe of the atmosphere here. While there's never any question that you're in an ordinary room and not actually shrunken down to toy size, the attention to detail is still impeccable. Several actual toys are enlarged in a realistic and accurate way, and even the decorations made up for the films and the line are filled with great details and jokes. Although some are a little outdated. <laughs> and no surprise, there are plenty of references for the Pixar geeks. There's some awesome childhood nostalgia trigger from actually standing on a giant Candyland board. 
although I'm glad the chutes and ladders board isn't on the floor because I'd hate to be sent all the way back in line if I landed on the wrong spot. And look, Robot Don Rickles even insults the guests. It's quite a... Okay, wait a second. I know I said the attention to detail was great, but there's always got to be one stupid thing that bugs me, and here it is. Oh, look my nitpick. This. That's an accurate replica of eyes from a real-life Mr. Potato Head toy. But unlike the real toys, the potato heads in the movies have some. Um, excuse eyes. me, his and eyes are up there. I hope, uh, I hope someone was fired for that. And why do this potato head's <laughs> eyes keep staring at me? It's a tiny bit creepy the, the way Pat he's looking at Like, you know that they Rickles wanted Don Rickles to openly insult the guests more. Simultaneously but then they were worried about parents' complaints. Like, way more awesome than why did Mr. Potato Head call my daughter a hockey puck? You know, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> um, that's why. <laughs> I, I, I... I had fun doing this Don Rickles Terminator Photoshop. Um... <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Terminator. Movie. I'm a nice bot. hockey puck. You and me, we're fucking done professionally. Much like the <laughs> world's other Toy Story themed ride, it's a shooter, but instead of moving you slowly through a bunch of flat cutouts with targets, this consists of several shooting mini games on 3D screens. It's a fun time, and while it's not my favorite ride in the park, I completely understand the popularity. It's a ride that could be equally enjoyed by all ages. There's no major drop so the little kids can ride, but the video game aspect keeps the adults entertained and engaged in a way a ride like Snow White Scary Adventures might not. Aside from rides and shows, Hollywood Studios also has museum-type areas, such as Walt Disney, One Man's Dream, which covers Disney's life as well as a brief history on... I have no idea if this is still projects, here or not. ...and even a tiny bit of behind-the-scenes info on what makes the park... I story. don't think it is. I think it's, um, the launch bay now. Exhibits, meet and greets, and sneak peeks yeah, I know the this isn't there anymore. Oh, and just a reminder yeah. for how much time has passed since the lost version of this video. Back then, one of the sneak peeks was for this, wait for it, when it was called this. Yep. Well, it's hard to find much funny to say about museums, so let's go back to live shows with Voyage of the Little Mermaid. Not to be confused with the upcoming ride, Journey of the Little Mermaid. Uh, yeah, there's a big difference between a voyage and a journey. One of them goes okay, to one the, dream is sea, still there. the other goes to the center of the earth. Oh. The show starts off by raining on you, followed by kind of neat but ultimately pointless laser effects. Uh, tropical laser be. The sounds of home star like jam they might be giant. The show is under the sea. <laughs> we all know how high energy the song is, and it's set to some great puppetry. Once that song ends, however, the show really isn't that good. For a live show, it relies really heavily on just showing us scenes from the film. No disrespect to the cast members, as I'm not sure as much yeah, as frozen like for the first time in forever. Out, yeah, literally. Yeah. Like I remember, I remember being the only one walking out of this, just absolutely despising it. While everybody else that I went with was like, "No, it was pretty bad." Like, why even bother? No. Things start to look up when there's a pretty cool Ursula puppet animatronic parade float something on stage. The parts of the show that actually do live things Starting are good. She signs her voice but... away. Most of the story is told in yeah. clips from the movie. That's like the bulk of the movie. The entire romantic subplot, the entire action climax, just in clips we've all seen. There's no performance of Kiss the Girl or anything. Yeah, but at least Ariel's not black. I think we can all agree. (laughs) There are some emotional stakes for you, killing off a guy we've never actually seen before. And now, oh, yeah, we're doing a live stream. I'm just going to sit here. I got it. We're doing a little stream this long on YouTube. We need to rant about woke culture. So, uh. Argle, blargle. Argle, argle to the blargle. Culture war. Culture war. I'm 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 tired. I've had it with all of you. Hell no. I'm, going back. Back. I don't, I'm tired of being awake. I'm going back to sleep. This is a sheeple. <laughs> Frighten, meaning the animated characters are supposed to really be there. So does that mean all those clips from the movie were really going on behind her? Are there two? He was her queen. And out of nowhere, somebody in a Max costume shows up on stage and they just sort of hug awkwardly in front of a picture of them kissing. And I don't get it. We waited in line for a long time to see a live show. If we wanted clips from the movie, we still have that bulky white plastic clamshell VHS with alleged phallic imagery in our basement somewhere. But you know what? At least this one has a more concise climax than the ride. Figure out a climax that can be acted out on stage. Don't just expect us to be excited by video. Yeah, but the ride also could have judged the movie footage if it wanted to. (laughs) That's fair. ...around to Sunset Boulevard for another live performance based on Disney's next animated movie, Beauty and the Beast. 
located in a small scale replica of the I'm Hollywood Bowl. Four Ariel. Beauty and the Beast is one of my all time favorite Disney movies, so I'd be a little upset if this sucked. And fortunately, it's a lot better than the Little Mermaid show, but it's still very flawed, mostly because it's way too rushed, so they cut out important parts. And while it's mostly enjoyable, I think the flaws bug me more here because I'm so attached to the source material. You know, you know what? Apparently, I when when the offer was first floated to Alan Menken to, to adapt Beauty and the Beast for Broadway, his biggest concern was that it would become this. <laughs> his biggest concern that was that was that it would just be this all over again because I think he'd seen this and was not impressed. <laughs> so anyway, yes, th th this um, but well. Uh... We have the energy to keep going that long. When we get to this video, I'll talk about it. But uh, riffing this live show was the most fun I've had writing a video <laughs> because it gave me so much to work with, but it was still enjoyable enough to watch on its own just by nature of being Beauty and the Beast. So Right, right. So, But, but it was also like ridiculous enough that I had plenty of material to work with. Compared to, compared to like the... Uh, Festival of the Lion King, which gave me some stuff to work with, but then for the most part, just good performances of the songs. Yeah, and yeah. It's it's like I liked it, but it didn't give me as much to work with to to latch onto for mockery. But you know, the show, and I think it warrants its own bonus video. So stay tuned for that. Stay right, tuned for that, folks. To look at here. Let's start stay with Rock and Roller Coaster, starring. Uh, the Muppets. Smith. I was close. The premise Steven Tyler's a Muppet. Tour of G Force Records, which <laughs> changed my mind. With such rock legends as Queen, The Who, Springsteen, The Kinks, and um, uh, bullshit, bullshit, was, bullshit, and bullshit. Yeah, I was going to say that was very similar to a joke that Tony had in his top eleven, uh, in his top eleven countdown, and I wrote it before seeing that video and then i just kept it in any way <laughs> well well here's um, the thing here's the thing it's different enough here's the thing in the in the 90s disney had formed hollywood records which was their own um s sort of legit record label which was not meant to just release disney stuff because they already had walt disney walt disney records for the right. for the explicitly disney stuff the idea was that Hollywood Records would be like a real, you know, legit label that would have bands that would produce hits and shit. And um, it didn't quite work out for them. I, I think pretty early on they, um, I, I, uh, like, like early on they uh, they managed to acquire the rights to Queen's entire back catalog, which hmm. um, which they re released since then. But other than that. Like, especially by the time Dave would have made this video, I think Hollywood Records was pretty much just Disney Channel stars and shit. So, so that that's why Queen. That's why Queen is the one legit poster you see in that in that room is because Hollywood Records had the right to Queen. Yeah, the but right they could Queen, put. Yeah. But they could put up a bunch of T-shirts of other rock bands. Sure, sure. I th I think memorabilia is. I think there's different rules with that. The, the the rules of licensing rights will never make sense. And uh, by the way, by the way, um, Aerosmith was not their first choice for this for this ride. Uh, their first choice was the Rolling Stones, but uh, but Mick Jagger and Keith Richards just demanded too much no. money. I know, I know, shocking. <laughs> and so they were so they were just like, well, Aerosmith just recorded that song for Armageddon for us, so they're probably cheap. <laughs> don't do anything <laughs> yeah Ugh. and then steven tyler fucking raged against the machine with that hand gesture the fucking <laughs> yeah in which, which later got add the had the cgi finger added to it and and we, Ken marino was there too yes we, we talked about before i did not even recognize ken marino until after this video was released like i I did because he doesn't say anything. Anyway, I didn't. You happen to be outside a recording booth, and there's Aerosmith. It's really them standing right behind there, the window. There, Ken Marino. Two dimensional, and there's their manager, Ileana Douglas. Are you? 
I, I make this super obscure cameo to this web series that Ileana Douglas made a cameo on. I, like, there were so many Ken Marino clips I could have cut to had I just noticed he's sitting right <laughs> there. So many, so many. Are you the Ileana Douglas who works at Ikea, or are you the one who plays the one who works oh, at Ikea? I'm both. Dude, she's getting naked. That's weird. She informs them that they're late for a concert. Wow. I'm going to dip my big 10 inch in it. Aerosmith. Just as they're saying goodbye, <laughs> Steven Tyler gets a brilliant idea. Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Here. There's the gesture. The Steven likes it here is another reference to Paula Tunkin's uh, American Idol recap. Uh, that was the run, run gag he had because Steven Tyler was an American Idol judge at the time. Yeah, for that one season. And, and what um, was what the? I mean, I mean, look, I love Steven Tyler, but American Idol was never designed to to find to find singers like Steven Tyler even remotely. Like, like that's not the kind of singer they were ever looking for. Uh, I wish they were. Honestly, it'd be a much more interesting fucking show. But the hell's he doing mm -hmm. as a judge? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, PFT running gag in those recaps where it's like. Because I guess I guess in recruiting Steven, they were trying to go the opposite direction of Simon Cowell, and he was yeah. just, he just liked everybody. So every like judge recap, PFT always starts with Steven likes it, and anytime Steven Tyler showed any trepidation about a performance, he said Steven likes it? Question <laughs> mark. Was so, Ellen DeGeneres a, a judge of American Idol for a season at, uh, around this time? At, at least, like, I can't, I can't remember if it was the same season, but I feel like she was at one point. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 no, I, it wasn't the same season. I think it was either right before or right after Steven Tyler. I feel like right after. So anyway, <laughs> good times. How about some backstage passes? Oh, wow, I never knew Aerosmith. Oh, was that, so nice let me let me tell you something about that. Sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm dominating this thing. But anyway. No, go, um, go for it. I, so, I, I've been I was carrying this thing for four hours, so I'm glad to have uh, <laughs> additional Our <work>. turn. <laughs> so the whole thing about – so okay, so the whole thing about that line, how about some backstage passes, you'll notice there's a bit of a pregnant pause right before Steven Tyler says, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I love that idea. In that pregnant pause, the, the way this was designed, the way this was conceived originally – was that in that pregnant pause, the cast member was supposed to say, hey, how about some backstage passes? To which Steven Tyler on the screen would have replied, hey, I love that idea. How about some backstage passes? So now I learned that. Uh, and and I realized, well, shit, I've been on that attraction like like six or seven times, and the cast member never, never said that. <laughs> So a couple of times after I learned that when I would ride the when I would ride the ride at that point in the pre-show I would give them like a couple of milliseconds and then if the cast member didn't say it I would say it. I would just <laughs> I would just bellow out in the room how about some backstage passes cuz in a way it's even funnier if it's just a if it's just Steven Tyler responding to a random ass guest. <laughs> on top of which on top of which, I have enough self-awareness to know I look exactly like the kind of entitled douchebag who would just yell something like that out. Like, that's just, that's the vibe I give off. I'm, I'm, like, I'm how about some backstage passes? <laughs> yeah, how about some I backstage like passes? What? <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at peace with it. I'm, I, I, know, I know what I look like. So, anyway. <laughs> I did see on social media, they apparently only recently brought back a human cast member playing Chris grabbing the Les Paul. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Yeah, I've never seen that either. <laughs> so uh, that was and, they, that and was of course, something... yeah. and of course, the name is specifically Chris, so it can be a man or a woman. Yeah, so. yeah. They the, the theme park tradition of characters with gender neutral names <laughs> who interact with pre recorded anything. <laughs> if I ever see Steven Tyler on the street, I'm totally going to demand a backstage pass to wherever he's going next. <laughs> Apparently, the parking garage is right outside the recording studio. Sure, I do love the set design okay, the of the low area. Yeah. Rock and roller coaster is oh, yeah. a lot of fun. As a kid, I was terrified of roller It's probably coaster like up like, there in terms of like yeah, one of the better designed load so areas. Each oh, de definitely. And love the very much steel look here, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Very much <laughs> theming that uh, 
that does not fit in with the the quote Disney image, which is uh, right, right, which is part of what's fun about it. Each car plays a different Aerosmith song in a new arrangement recorded specifically for the coaster. So if you don't care for roller coasters or Aerosmith, might as well skip right to a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of a really freaking tall building. Mm -hmm. No talking raccoons and people clothes, zero stars. (laughs) The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror. I confess I haven't seen Charlie's all favorite ride episodes, but even I caught a few references to some of the classics that I'm sure hardcore <laughs> fans would find even more. Of course, hardcore fans. At least it was number six. Specialized in psychological <laughs> twists and tragic character. Plays. On the Disney World <laughs> list, I think. Ride, ride it. That in itself yeah, is the biggest mind. shock in the Twilight Zone. Of course, this is a free fall ride, but it's more than just that. Not only do you bounce up and down in a randomized pattern for a while, but your car is actually being pulled down, so you're falling faster than you would through gravity alone. The combination of archive footage of yes, we, we can't do the meme because uh, this is the old Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. So there are some great we can't repeat yes, the joke from, from indeed the indeed it is. Thank you, thank you, Christ. The first Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The first Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The first Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Charlie, Charlie, I can boot I will... you from the stream at any moment. I, I, I can I can make it look like an accident, Charlie. That's all I'm saying. I just won't appear on camera. By the way, I only <laughs> just recently learned that the pre-show of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror was directed by Joe Dante. Yep. Because mm-hmm. I guess he wanted to be involved with a Twilight Zone project that didn't kill people. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Paid to a franchise that isn't exactly cutting edge <clears throat> the youth demographic. I'm looking at you, pirates. At night, there's Phantasmic, and unlike the Disneyland version, which is oh, we've never talked about that. No, no, no. This, gets its own they, they, this didn't the go Hollywood anywhere. Hills Amphitheater with its own snack bars and gift kiosks. I admit I've never seen all of the Disneyland version, only bits of it as I was running to get to Indiana Jones while the lines were still short. But the Disney World version is a huge freaking deal with people lining up sometimes hours in advance to get good seats. And it's understandable because the show is rather epic, but it's also rather silly. So epic and silly, in fact, that it'll take, you guessed it, a whole bonus video to talk about it. Expect that one. Uh, one whole account. bonus video? Forgive me if I'm yeah, wrong. exactly I'm one. Exactly one, one video so that does not expand into a trilogy. Video, and now you're not even nope. going to cover the whole park? No, no, it's just, it's just three videos for the price of one, you know? You people are so demanding. Like Epcot and Five Kingdom, videos, Hollywood but Studios doesn't count. have as many rides as yeah. Kingdom, but unlike those parks, almost every ride is completely awesome. Okay, I'm not exactly rewriting the great movie ride five times a day, but it's still neat, and the other rides are even better. I consider the Backlot Tour more. And now I miss Great ride. Movie Ride. The shows are a bit more yeah. hit and miss, yep. but most of them offer something entertaining. And, of course, the Disney magic atmosphere makes you feel like you're in a different world, even though that world is one as fake as Hollywood. I don't know what you're talking about. I felt right at home. Pretending to be film sets that are pretending to be cities and spaceports and things like that. But it makes me really excited to visit Christopher. Okay, that part blew my mind. Like, because I had only seen, like, the front of the ad ad. And, like, like, walking into the queue, I was like, what the hell? (laughs) The park's Universal Studios, but it's really hard to say which one's better than the other. Hell, it's hard enough to compare Universal Studios Orlando with Universal Hollywood. Whether you prefer Hollywood Studios yep. or Universal Studios relies mostly on which movie licenses you prefer. I like both parks a lot, although Universal lost quite a few points for me when they closed the Back to the Future ride. Jeez, you'll find something to complain about in any theme park. Why are you still here? I'm bored. The company barely does anything with me these days. I'm basically a poor This is before the Paul Rudis shorts, of course. Yeah, so that changed. <laughs> Yeah, th- th- this was even for get a horse. Yeah. Oh right. Like, like get a horse. Yeah, they... Why is get a horse not on Disney Plus yet? That that seems. But like... it was. No, not. Search for it. It's not. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That it's that it's not on Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Very so few recent the... uh, Disney animated studios shorts are like like pretty much all the Pixar shorts are, but not. Like like paper uh, paper man isn't on there either. Um, right. Beast, the one that came with um, Big Hero Six. The only ones 
the only recent ones I think that are are uh, Us Again, which was released with Raya, and uh, and Inner Workings, which was released with Moana. And other than that, like none of them. <clears throat> it's crazy. I don't know why. I think because they're all on the um, that one short collection that's on Netflix. Maybe. Right now. Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah, that um, could yeah. be. Hang on. That would that would make sense. research in progress. <laughs> no one will be cheated in the googling scene. <laughs> yeah, because Frozen Fever is also part of that short collection. Right, right. Like Paperman, Frozen Fever, Get a Horse. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah, that'd do it. Hang on. Yeah, I'm just now well, noticing that. So w- once that contract expires, then they'll end up on yeah. Disney Plus. And rest in peace once again to Fantastic Four 2005. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not on there anymore. Yeah, they just took it off. <laughs> Good God! Why? Why do they keep doing that? What? I have no idea. Because they hope nobody will notice. <laughs> Four major parks of Walt Disney World. But that only makes up like 3% of the land Disney owns. So what's there to do with the rest of it? Well, in the next official uh, episode, and bonus videos about specific attractions don't count as official episodes, we'll talk about some of the other stuff on the property. Ooh, I'm not official! Resort hotels, and of course, <laughs> a whole lot of shopping. Ending with Animaniacs. Of course. This was the uh, album version of Variety Speak, I think, which is a slightly different recording from the uh, the episode version. From either one of the episode versions. Think that variety speak, bobbity bop, bobbity bop. 